Hey everyone, it's MK. Welcome back. Welcome to this first video that I'm doing from inside of Pro Stitcher Premium. So, I have a question for you today. Are you ever working at your machine and you do something and you have a little aha moment? I'm actually sure that your answer is yes right now because we're all working with this new update, right? And we're hypersensitive to the new functionality and how it looks and where we're finding all the buttons and the tabs. Well, I was working at my machine the other day and I had a little aha moment doing the duplicate function. And I thought, just like I do many times with these videos, wow, why don't I share that with my followers? So today we're gonna go inside a simulation. I'm gonna recreate the quilt and the scenario that happened to me that day with regard to duplicate, and then I'll meet you right back here. Hey everyone, all right, it's MK, and this is my first YouTube video from within Pro Stitcher Premium. What we're gonna do today is talk a little bit about the duplicate function. Now, if you remember back several months ago, I did a YouTube video, it was called Sim Session 12, Duplicate and Baseline, and of course that was done in Pro Stitcher Standard. So today is gonna be just a little bit of review, but also a little bit different functionality now that we're inside of Pro Stitcher Premium. Also, I want to just share with you a little aha moment that I had while I was working with Duplicate today. Second thing is what you're looking at on the screen is just a little line drawing which is meant to be a visual representation of the little quilt that I was working on in my studio today. All right, so I had loaded it up, I had stitched my top border, and then I had moved on and started stitching my little cornerstone motifs here. And it was during that process that I had my little aha moment, which I didn't know before. So what I'm about to explain to you, I'll have to apologize if it was painfully obvious and you already know this. Okay, so let's start with this little motif. I opened up this little sash motif, and the first thing that I like to do when I'm working with sashes is I kind of like to loosely place it where it belongs. Okay, so I gotta put my machine and sim here. You would grab your handlebars if you were working at your quilt, and you would come into position, and I wanna loosely place this now up where my needle, my crosshairs are, which is where my needle is. So I would go under modify, reposition and let's go ahead and reposition on the start point okay so now I want to go ahead and duplicate this along in these other spaces in days gone by I would just go ahead and multi-point mark this area I would skew this little motif I would baseline I would save I would stitch and then I would move on to the next sash open it up again multi-point mark skew baseline save stitch okay I would do that all the way across what I try to remember to do, and sometimes I'll be honest, I forget, is I try to use the duplication function so that I can go ahead and get some of that multi-point marking out of the way in the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to move my machine over here and I'm going to duplicate this, this little motif. And herein lies the little aha moment that I had. If you watch that other YouTube video, we talk about duplication and we talk about just duplicate it wherever you are and it'll appear on the screen and then you can go ahead and place them later. Well, I realized today that if I move my machine before I duplicate and then I hit that button, it will duplicate it where my needle is. And that can help immensely to keep your screen a little bit more organized, right? If you duplicate with your machine in a different location, it may be a little jumbled. You may have one duplicating right on top of the other. Okay, we also have edit and copy and paste now, but I haven't really started using that too much at this early stage of the ball game with premium. So I'm gonna continue on with duplicate. Okay, the next thing I like to do with my sash units, and especially in this particular little quilt, is I don't want them to be all exactly the same in each one of these locations. So I'm gonna stop right now, I'm gonna go into rotate, and I'm gonna mirror and flip that little guy, and those functions are over here on the right, and then I wanna go ahead and swap my start and end point, which is up there at the top. Okay, we're good to go. Now I want to move along and go to the next 
space and I'm going to duplicate again. Now I just want to talk you through one little alternate way that you could do this. If right now you went back over and selected this little little unit right here and duplicated it over here, it would be in the right orientation, right? Following my line of thinking of having every other one be oriented differently. But the trouble with that is it's going to put the stitch order in a different order if you do it that way, okay? And it's not that that's wrong or that's bad if you understand what's happening. I just prefer to stitch that one and then this one and then this one and then this one, keeping them in the same order as I'm duplicating them, okay? So I'm just going to move my machine over here. This is the last one that I had selected. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it really quickly. I'll do that mirror and flip and swap the start and end point. One more time I'm going to move my machine into position and then I'll do the duplicate, rotate, mirror and flip it and swap the start and end point. Okay now I have multiple ones on the list. They've been duplicated in the proper order. Now I'm going to go back over here or I could start at the right hand side. It really doesn't matter. I'm just kind of a creature of habit. So I usually go back over to the left. Let's select that first motif, which is this one on the list. And I'm going to be selecting from the workspace rather than trying to select over here, only because I'm working with this line drawing and sometimes I select the wrong thing. Okay, and I, I love the new workspace listing of the patterns that I'm working with now anyhow. So let's go back and select the first one on the list and we would do our multi-point marking. Okay, so I'm going to do this a little bit quickly here so that we can move on. Whoops, there I did it again. I have to put my machine in simulation mode before I go to move. And I can see I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? I still had my area open from over here. Well, we don't want that, so let's go ahead and clear the area, and then we'll start over. Okay, so even even MK, you know, I get a little ahead of myself sometimes, and I just forgot that one little step. But no problem, clear the area and start over. All right. All right, this is the only pattern that I have selected right now. I'm going to go ahead and modify, skew, and I'm going to skew to it. I want a baseline. And then I'm going to move on. I better clear that area again so that I don't forget. And I would move over here. Now, just to save time, I'm just going to do a two corner this time. I would do a, a multi point if I was really doing this for real. But let's just do two corner. And you can see on my simulator, I've got those functionality up here with my area tab, or I have them um, assigned on my buttons over here, whichever you like. All right, let's go ahead and select that other unit. I'm going to select it off the workspace so that I can select the right one. There we go, that one. And then we'll modify, we'll skew, and skew 2 is what I'm normally using. And then we'll baseline. Let's clear the area, and we'll move on. There, I did it again. All right, so two corner, two corner. I would have done four, but I'm just doing two. Let's select the next one on the list. See which one would it be? There we go. I guess once you baseline them, it does move them down to the bottom of the list. I do remember that from the standard version. So this does make sense that these are the two that I've already positioned and baselined and it moved them down on the list. So there's the next one. Our area is built. We'll do modify. We'll skew it. And we'll baseline. And this time I won't forget. Turn on simulation. Come over here. I got to clear my area. Do a two corner. I would be doing four, but I'm trying to go quicker. Two corner. I have to select the next one. So let's hit our select button, go on workspace, and it should be this one right there. It is. We'll do modify, we'll skew, and we'll skew two. 
We'll baseline. We'll clear the area. Now, one little caveat with this. If you're working on a large quilt, you might not want to do the duplication on too many uh, motifs, right? Because we're quilters, and we know as we quilt that, that our quilt has a tendency to get drawn in a little bit. You can counteract that if you want by doing some straight line ditching. Maybe you're a quilter that likes to go ahead and stabilize your whole quilt with some ditching and then go back and do your individual. That would be another way. I just find that um, if I do a small number of grouped motifs, like maybe two or three, that I can just do that, that duplication and I can just get them in there and it's not going to be an issue with the draw up. Okay, the next thing that I want to do, if you've taken one of my classes, you know that we talk a lot about saving anything that we have skewed. Okay, so we have skewed all four of those designs. I'm going to go ahead and select them together now. We want to select with our multiple select and we're just going to go ahead and let's do a select none to begin with because I want to start from the top of the list, that one, and then that one, and then that one, and then that one. Selecting it in that way will keep my stitch order intact. Okay? And then I'm in a baseline. That makes it a grouping. I can rename it right there if I want to. How about I could just click clear and I might just call this row one sashes or whatever makes sense to you. Naming it over here does not save it, remember? So we can go ahead and save it. Now you can skip that renaming step if you want. Um, I do a lot of renaming, especially when I'm working in layout and rendering. Okay, so now each one of those, every other one is uh, rotated in a different manner. I think that gives for a little bit more visual interest. They're all in the proper stitch order. I've saved it, so now I'm safe to stitch. We'll just go into Pro Stitcher, Quilt, and we'll run. And it should travel all the way back over here to the first one, and then it's going to go through and stitch. Okay, so that's just a little nugget, a little tidbit about duplicate. Think about trying to do some duplicating before you do your multi-point marking. Move your machine into position before you do that duplicating, and it's going to help keep your screen a little less jumbled, and it'll duplicate those units right where you want them. All right, everybody, hope that was helpful. Until next time, everyone, enjoy your Pro Stitcher Premium. It's MK. Bye-bye. All right, so there you have it. Duplicate is a very powerful function, and I have been using it a lot over the last several years, especially when I'm doing my layout and rendering. This day, I was actually doing it at my quilt, and that's when I realized that the position of the machine does actually make a difference when you duplicate something. I think subconsciously I maybe knew that, but I learned that in a whole new way that day at the machine. So I hope this was helpful. I encourage you to keep watching me now on my channel because I do plan to do a lot more free content here on YouTube from within Pro Stitcher Premium. Plus, I plan on doing much more in the way of live webinars, recorded webinars, small group sessions, one-on-ones, all of those types of things. So, you guys, thanks for following me. Stay plugged in. And until next time, everybody, from MK to you, happy quilting. Bye-bye.